Double click. In this video, I'll be sharing the framework of exactly how to master any skill ever. And I'll share it from the perspective from me currently learning a skill which I plan to master and as well as a skill that I currently am a master of. Starting off, think about a skill that you're currently learning or you actually plan to learn. For me, I'm currently learning this skill right here of content creation. And at the end, the framework we're about to get into, I'll demonstrate how that exactly fits into a skill that I'm already a master of. If I knew this earlier, life as we know it would be supremely different, like leagues different on my side. And now that I do know this, I can make huge leaps of progress and make significant change for a grander life setup. And right before we get into it, since this framework does work for literally any skill ever, don't get hung up too much on the details that I'm going over. It's just to speak through basically the hands-on, what's going on step-by-step step as we walk through exactly how to do this. So with that, let's get straight into it. Imagine a few years ago when lockdown was prevalent and social media was blowing off left, right, center. There was definitely a lot of media consumption going on, as well as a lot of folks becoming content creators. What's important here is that as folks were sharing not just the videos they were making, but then also the outcome. For example, how many millionaires overnight were made or how many people are able to replace their nine to five day job by doing this. Essentially, there was also a huge camp of people that would remark saying, Oh, look at these people. It's so easy. I can just whip on my camera too. I can do silly dances. I can just, you know, vlog about my life and talk about anything and I can do it too so easily. The people we just talked about, there may be two groups. One group where maybe they actually took that first step. Maybe they took a video of themselves. Maybe it's on their, you know, camera roll and they just never chose to publish or upload because they didn't want to, they didn't feel comfortable, what have you. At the same time, there's folks that, you know, maybe did do this. Maybe there's 30 uploads that they did and they kind of took that first step towards mastering the skill. The first group of people, they don't really matter in our situation because they didn't take that next step to learn or get anywhere close to mastery. So we'll leave them aside. The second group of people, I was one of them where I was like, all right, let me actually try to do this and kind of take it to the next step. For me, I have experienced public speaking and interacting slash engaging with live audiences. And so for me, I thought, oh, my unfair advantage is this. So all I got to do as well is kind of, you know, be able to speak to the camera, which I'm comfortable to do because it's like I'm talking, let's say, to a friend or a younger version of myself or to, you know, a group of people, which wasn't different from what I'm used to. And so I thought, OK, you know, how hard could it be? Let's embark on this journey. With this context, I was at that first level of mastery framework, which is officially known as unconscious incompetence. What that means in English is that I thought I'd be really good, have great outcomes, you know, that confidence as if I'm, you know, God's gift and all of these things. But then that brings us to the second level of this framework, which really gets to the next step of mastering this skill or any other. So at this second level of mastery, I'm basically at the point where, hey, I am creating videos. At the same time, they're not really on the same topic or even kind of related really well, where maybe I'm talking about, for example, you know, how to make money as a beatboxer. And I beatbox is kind of the skill we'll get into later on. And so how to then make money in the stock market, then how to make money in the cryptocurrency markets. Like it is money and finance related, but in the end, the kind of people that are interested in these different topics, whether you're talking about, hey, how to use credit cards to travel for free using points and miles, or you know how to get paid every single day through the dividends that you can earn in the stock market by investing in certain stocks. All of these type of things, like they're great and cool, uh, fun topics for me personally, but when you post it like that, you're basically not targeting, let's say, the same audience, which I just thought, oh, uh, you know, everyone's like me. If you like money, if you like finance, then all of these things are related. It's not that they're not. But when you learn more about the algorithm and how YouTube works as, you know, a system or how social media works as a holistic algorithm, that's when I was realizing like, yo, I'm not as good as basically what I thought. And even though there's valuable info, it's about how you package it and all these type of details, which just in simple words is I wasn't where I needed to be, but then I was aware that, okay, I'm not as good as you know what I thought I was in the beginning. To translate this to English one more time, it basically means if I'm creating videos about knitting and the next day I'm having Minecraft or Fortnite type of videos like video games, 
And then maybe the next day I'm, you know, have cute pictures of my pet or whatever. Right. So they're all like, could be good videos. They all could have, you know, huge potential, huge reach, whatever you're looking for, like views and all at the same time, does it really come together? So in other words, if you subscribe for knitting content of, you know, someone, um, you know, if they're posting all this stuff after the fact, but never doing the content that you actually subscribe to them in the first place, it basically indicates to YouTube, like, Hey, the people that subscribe to you are not returning to you. So if they're not returning, but even though they once kind of quote unquote liked you or wanted you, then maybe we don't want to promote this channel. Maybe let's not, you know, allow this channel to grow until, you know, it's proven in another manner. On the flip side, you may have a video that, you know, went super viral, but since you're not able to repeat that process or the procedure of how you got that outcome, you're basically in the same vein. You have an amazing, let's say 10 million views video, but if you don't know what you did to recreate those results, then you're pretty much still consciously incompetent. So all else equal at this point in the journey, there's a choice. It could be like, Hey, I'm doing these videos and they're not all, you know, hitting whatever your metric of, you know, success is. And so some people quit at this point. Some people may say, Oh, you know what? The, the algorithm, it's all luck. You know, it's somebody back at YouTube headquarters just kind of clickety clack and promote, you know, the next Mr. Beast, for example. And so all of this to say, it's either a choice of continuing to go on or realizing like, hey, maybe there's more to the picture and then getting to our third step in our framework. The third step is known as conscious competence. And what that means is exactly how it sounds. You know that, hey, you're competent. You may know that, hey, maybe I'm not the number one guy in the whole world in this. At the same time, you know you're not absolutely at the beginner level, so you're consciously competent. At this level, from a content creation perspective, for our same example, it's essentially knowing like, okay, hey, if I create a certain type of video, you know, and with this type of structure, where maybe in the beginning there's a hook. So in this video, I was like, hey, I'm gonna walk you through the framework to master any skill, and I'll give it to you from the perspective of something I'm learning right now, which I am, as well as a skill that I'm about to get into that I've mastered. And after the hook, maybe you have a little more explanation of how are you gonna do this? What's kind of the breakdown? Maybe additional information that folks need to know, which is pretty much what I did if you rewind this video and check it out and then getting into the meat of the subject. And so fast forwarding, if you kind of know, you know, how to make a video, but then how to make it on a similar topic or tangential topic, or, hey, you know, these type of topics reach this type of TAM, a total addressable market, where maybe, okay, you know, making an example, right? Like financial mindset videos, for example, budgeting or being frugal or financial minimalism, for example, like, you know, consuming less, but then, you know, being happy with what's in front of you. So this type of topic may reach, let's say a maximum of 10 million people. But if you want a hundred million, you know, viral type of video, you may need to appeal of, for people of all ages, different groups, you know, something that, you know, for example, maybe there's no audio in terms of a specific language, but maybe just music or, you know, kind of ASMR where it doesn't take somebody to know that language, maybe just visually appealing and it could appeal to kids like from a very, very young age or, you know, even older folks where that's the same difference in this case. So it just really depends what you're looking for and how you want to target it. But you're consciously competent of like, what does the playing field look like? If you do X, you can expect Y. Of course, there could be a sprinkle of luck, but if you take luck aside, the base skill set and the foundation, you're consciously competent to repeat it one more time. I'm definitely not getting too deep in the weeds. For example, more than the structure of your script, maybe you have, you know, decent audio on a microphone like this or decent, you know, video. And then there's lighting behind me that's natural at the time of recording. So there's other nuance that you kind of know over time. Or for me, I just didn't know these things in the beginning and maybe others did, right? So in the end, there's a lot of factors and input which come from through just practicing, practicing, then you get to this baseline. And now the mastery step Let's talk about step number four. At this point, you're unconsciously competent. In other words, you don't even need to think about it and it, it works. It happens, you know, the results you expect, you don't even need to think about it. You're like, okay, if I did this, why didn't this happen is the question that comes up versus, you know, if I did this, then this should happen. No, it's why didn't it happen? And you're able to problem solve, dig deeper, kind of connect the dots throughout, you know, the whole landscape. And let me give one more kind of more obvious example. Let's say when it comes to breathing, or just walking or brushing your teeth or using the restroom or otherwise. If I ask you, or if you think about it, are you a master of these things? Generally, yeah, like you're, you're able to do it, whether you're a little out of it, a little tired, a little not, whatever, you know, the point is, these things can be like secondary actions and they're almost expected in today's society. And no one says, oh, you're a master of brushing your teeth. Good job. It's expected. But that mastery is the same difference for a skill set that you're learning. So from a content creation perspective, 
Maybe it's not about growing your own channel. Maybe you have mastery enough to teach. Maybe, you know, you know that, okay, hey, that title, that thumbnail, that combination, maybe that doesn't work. You know that, hey, you know, someone's starting from scratch, maybe this is how you get from zero to 10,000 subscribers fast or to 100,000 or a million, just depends on, you know, whatever niche or category you're targeting. And so now transitioning to the skill that I've mastered, I'll walk us through this same framework and how that looked step by step. For me, I love to beatbox. And when I learned about this skill in general, all I knew was that the total scope per se, and this was when I was a lot younger, like 12 years old younger, it was basically there's three elements. And these three sounds or elements can basically replicate any beat out there, period. They're known as B, T, and K. So if you colloquially heard like boots and cats and boots and cats, so B, T, K, B is a kick drum, like your T is hi-hat, and then K is a snare, like k or in this case. So really quick with these three sounds, you can do example like hip hop stuff like You can also have variations where the tss can roll to become like So for example, trap music So there were definitely a couple different sounds there, but the bass framework is really that with these same sounds, you have reggaeton, for example. So like, very like simplistic there without even me trying to add really other variations or other sounds. And then for example, drum and bass, you have So again, like variations and stuff, but to that effect. So I go over this because in the beginning, all I could do when the basics were all I could do was like, tss, 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 tss. and I thought, well, hey, I can do tss. So there's only two other sounds. In other words, I could be a master of beatboxing, period. Like, so that's where my mind was at. And so I was basically unconsciously incompetent. The next stage was basically realizing like, hey, yeah, okay, there is a lot more to learn and I'm not there yet. And so when I was comparing myself to others or seeing other YouTube videos, for example, of like where beatboxing was just at in the landscape at that time, like we're talking 15 plus years ago, it was really centered around hip hop or, you know, maybe having kind of like throat based type of stuff or dubstep. So like, <clears throat> so like, <laughs> so this was like a big deal back then. So just like that's like level two, for example, like, hey, there's more things. And I definitely couldn't do that at the time easily. And I knew I needed to practice. Eventually, I became consciously competent, which is our step three of four, where, OK, I know that. All right. If I got to go, you know, do basic stuff, I can do basic stuff. I can kind of jack it up to a more advanced level and eventually you become a master. Right. So at that consciously competent time, I can basically repeat again and again and again and get things more refined. So a simple example is it's called like um, I'll just do it for you. So it's like, you know, it goes from single click to double click. So you can kind of hear it out. And uh, here's a quick sample. Double click. Just, you know, something like this. So. There's like a variation I could just keep practicing, keep practicing, and this is like off the cuff. So I can get it even more mastered if I wanted to. I could have practiced 10 more times before I recorded this right now on camera. But it's basically that fourth level of mastery, which is unconscious competence. So at this level, I'm able to just, you know, beatbox on the fly. I'm doing stuff, you know, as I'm walking, I don't even realize I'm beatboxing, like, oh, snap, you know, stuff like this. Or I'll be practicing something that I want to get better at, but I'll just be doing it because I know deep down, I'm like, oh man, I want to get that, you know, mastered, perfect, et cetera. And so at this point, I'm able to teach others. I'm able to see the concepts in other fields, see how things are related, see an opportunity in the overall market, like not just me doing the thing alone, but how it could connect to others. What other you know financial opportunities could there be within this industry? Because like doing the thing is one part and then spreading it from a community perspective or adding value to others, like all of those things are like what I consider like mastery of a skill set where you're not just making, let's say, if you're a blacksmith, like the best knife, but maybe, you know, knowing how other metals work because that's the master of that, like craftsmanship. Or if, you know, you're into wood shop or wood, wood workmanship, basically there's different types of woods. And so it's not about just being perfect at one type of wood, 
Maybe it's how to handle different situations in general. Essentially, if you know these four concepts, you can master any skill ever. And if I knew this earlier, it would have helped me a lot. And then knowing them now, I kind of look at anything I'm learning. I'm like, okay, where am I on the graph? Or where am I on that step-by-step -step, you know, pyramid per se of rising to that unconscious competence level? How far am I away from mastery? And I'm also able to know like, okay, what are the inputs? What are the you know, outcomes I could expect? Where do I need maybe a little luck, but I never look at it or rely on that. It's more about if you do you know, that conscious competence of the step-by-step -step again and again and again, you're definitely gonna get you know, some type of outcome, if not the outcome that you're looking for. And you can think and not just dream, but plan for hitting whatever goal you have to be bigger and bigger and get there one fine day, whenever that is. I'm really proud to say it because from mastery, I eventually rose to the top of my industry and you can definitely do that too. And I have the full story of what I did step-by-step. Step. I'll leave it over here and I'll see you there.